Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be providing some background information and formula derivations of the falling head permeability test. Now, this test is a laboratory experiment that is used to uh, determine the hydraulic conductivity, or we sometimes call that the coefficient of permeability, of a soil sample, all right? So um, this is a different, it's similar, but different than the constant head test. So let's talk about how the falling head test works. So you have a soil sample in, uh, in a cell. So let's go ahead and, and draw a cell here. And you typically have, you know, some porous stones here. And here's your soil sample, okay? Now, you typically have um, a, a container of water somewhere here. And we'll go ahead and draw that. Now this container of water is a separate container of water and it's going to have some kind of little hose connection into the soil sample, all right? Now this water is allowed to flow into the soil sample and it's going to saturate this soil sample, okay? So this soil sample is going to be completely saturated. And you're going to have uh, typically like a, uh, an outlet tube of some sort coming out here. And it's going to be connected somehow. Let me draw that a little bit better for us. Connected somehow to a piezometer, okay? And the piezometer, you know, is going to be, is going to have graduations there, all right? So this right here is a piezometer right there. Okay, now um, if you set this up efficiently, you're going to have this water flowing from some kind of water container up through the soil sample and it's going to come up here and it will rise uh, to a certain level in the piezometer. Okay, now this piezometer, you know, this piezometer is here, let's go ahead and draw the rest of it. This piezometer is probably going to be standing, you know, on a table. Let's say you have a, a table surface here. Okay, and the piezometer is um, going to have some initial head H1 at the very start of the test. Okay, and so then what you can do is you can uh, record H1, which again is this initial head value in the piezometer after you've set this all up and saturated the sample and um, let this thing, um, you know, fill up with water and... Uh, in fact, probably the tube is going to be probably connected down here somewhere. Okay. And again, for illustrative purposes, let's get the water in there. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better of a drawing. Still not great, but better. <laughs> um, so then what you do is you detach this spigot right here. And um, you, you open and close valves accordingly so you don't make a mess. But what you do is you let water flow out of the specimen, okay? Now, when the water flows out of the specimen, you got to do a few things simultaneously. First, you got to collect the water, okay? You're going to collect the water in a flask here, all right? Now, the water you collect um, will, will have some kind of volume, all right? So, you know, you'll have a, a volume of collection here. Now, as you collect this water, what's going to happen is this head, this head level is going to drop, okay? And when that head level drops, you're going to drop to a new spot here, all right? Now, this new spot, when you measure it, that's going to be H2, all right? So that's your final head. Now, you got to you got to do a few things at the same time here. So it's good if you got a few people um, working together on this. You collect the water, you watch this head drop to a new level, and you have a timer. You record the time uh, that it takes for that head to drop, all right? And you need someone to turn on and off these spigots um, you know, efficiently. So again, you don't make a mess and you don't lose track of your timing. All right. Um, so that's basically how, how the experiment works in the laboratory. And if you have a soil mechanics lab, uh, type of course, um, you'll probably perform this experiment, um, by hand. Okay. Or, or with a team. So where do the derivations come from? Well, here we go on that. The rate 
of flow through the soil specimen at time t is the following. We say q, that's a flow rate, is k times uh, h over l times the cross-section area. Now, is this anything new? Well, no, we've seen this relationship before. In fact, h over l is um, the hydraulic gradient. Now, it turns out this is gonna be equal to negative little a times dh dt, okay? Where little a is the cross-section area of the standpipe, okay? So the standpipe is, um, is basically the piezometer. It's the cross-section area of, of this piezometer right here that you're using to measure H1 and H2. So that's, it's a, little a is a small number, okay? It's a teeny tiny small number, all right? And then capital A, capital A is the uh, specimen cross section, all right? Now what we can do is we can set up a differential equation that models all of this behavior. And we're gonna set up this differential equation really by uh, just rearranging this right here. I mean, this is already uh, in kind of a differential equation form. This is dh dt, all right? So what we can do is take that differential equation and we can repackage it as, um, as dt equals little a capital L over capital A K times negative dH over H, okay? Now by doing this, what have I done? Well, I've separated my variables. So this is what we would call a, separa a separable ordinary differential equation, a separable ODE. So we'll make a little note of this. This is a separable ODE. And so here, the uh, little t time is our independent variable, and little h, which is um, the differential head, is uh, our dependent variable. And now what we can do, it, because it's separable, we can integrate both sides of this, okay? We can integrate both sides of this, um, and when we integrate this, we're going to integrate from uh, 0 to t, and then we're going to, uh, on the other side, we can also integrate from uh, H1 to H2, all right? And so when we do that, what we end up with is T equals little a L over A K times LN of H1 over H2. All right, um, so um, from there, we can repackage this if we want, and we can do some change of bases of uh, logs, change of base of log, and then we can get K equals 2.303 times little a L over capital A T, times log base 10 of H1 over H2. So you could, you know, rearrange this, uh, this equation and solve for K and keep it based on uh, a natural log if you want, uh, or you can do change of bases and, and uh, repackage this as log base 10 um, instead of natural log LN. Either one will work. Um, it just kind of depends on, you know, what, what version of the equation you like better. Um, in general, I like the, the natural log uh, version a little bit better, but um, the log base 10 works just fine. You get this coefficient 2.303 that pops out whenever you do change of base uh, for, for a logarithm. So that summarizes, um, you know, this, uh, this video, background information on the falling head test. If this was helpful to you, please hit like and subscribe.